Uh, hi, I'm Martin Meltrek. I work for Bohemian Interactive, uh, and I'm the project lead for Take on Mars. So I'd just like to show you a little bit of the gameplay, uh, just to give you an idea of what the game is about. So here we can see the main menu. Uh, you can see Mars here in the background, and this is where the simulation starts. You can see in the bottom left here, uh, basically the local Earth time, and from that the, evaluate, the, the calculated Mars time. So if we were standing in front of Mars, this is exactly what we would see. So, let's, so we have three game modes, the editor uh, to use for um, you know, creating scenarios, uh, as well as uh, testing whatever the game has available, you know, like vehicles, etc. Uh, then we have the scenarios, which are single missions, you know, like you might land somewhere, uh, you know, analyze something specific, uh, and, and situations like that. Excuse me, and we also have the uh, space program, which is a science-driven campaign. So uh, I'll start off with the two scenarios, which we have for presentation purposes. So here we go. And uh, here we're on a location called Victoria Crater. So all of our locations that we have in uh, Take on Mars are all real locations. So if I just jump outside of the rover here and just zoom away, you'll notice the uh, the train here. It's all based on real satellite data. So this is Victoria Crater, which uh, Opportunity, the rover, visited back in 2004. So I'll just uh, get close here. You'll notice over here a landing rover. So I'll just jump in here, and you'll notice the small rover uh, tucked away inside uh, this landing capsule. And uh, like I said, we do have full uh, simulation. So as you can see, it is bouncing around the train as it would realistically. So. Uh, I'm hoping it won't bounce for long, uh, uh, so, but while it does so, I will switch to the other rover. And uh, here we are. So uh, this, this rover is basically based on Opportunity, uh, which is a rover that drove past this location in reality. And uh, as you can see, we do simulate the uh, suspension system over here. Uh, and it's, it's called the Rocker Bogey system in real life. Um, it's basically what NASA uses uh, in, on their rovers. Uh, it was invented to overcome the issues uh, of the uh, lower gravity environment on Mars. Uh, specifically, it uh, basically divides the uh, mass among the six wheels. Uh, so there's no point which is heavier than any other. So uh, we can see in the background here the, uh, the rover unwinding. And like I said, it is all physicalized. If I just grab it and tug it, you can see it is several physics objects connected by the, by the physics engine. So if I just jump into the small rover, just turn that off, and uh, jump inside, you can see I'm looking from inside the rover from its camera. So up the top right, you can see it updating the cameras as I uh, as I drive it. And again, you can see the suspension system working. So uh, the physics simulation, the simulation in this game is very accurate. Um, we have, the, like, this rover itself is composed of about 60 individual parts, all physicalized. So if I just jump outside and grab a wheel and break it off, you can see uh, that it is truly made of many, many small parts. So, so I can uh, eventually take the poor thing apart. Uh, so I'll just grab that. Whoa, there we go. <laughs> so uh, jumping back to the rover here. Uh, Basically, the gameplay consists of uh, performing science analyses, uh, exploring the area, uh, and taking photos. So, in front of me now is just um, an explore target, which means I have to just drive up to it and uh, assess what to do further. So, here we are. And uh, in the background there, you can see a uh, photo target. So, I'll switch the in the in to the uh, rover's camera, turn towards it, and uh, turn to the... Uh, we're using the radial menu, I'll switch to the camera mode. So, there I go. I basically have to frame these points within the camera uh, to make a successful photo. So, if it's off the screen, you can see it wouldn't be a successful photo. So, I'll just put it here and uh, photograph complete. So, uh, I'll just continue along here and take photograph of the entire area. And uh, I'll just switch to this, uh, this other hazard cams as I drive backwards out of the crater. So you can see the wheels here are fully simulated, everything's fully simulated as close to reality as possible. So uh, we do allow a third person perspective, uh, not very hardcore, but you know, we're not worried about that. It allows the player to do anything he wants uh, and it's quite interesting. Now if I just jump outside completely, uh, we also do allow the player to go into this mode, which is a free flight camera. It does not go through objects, it does not go through the terrain, 
um, and it's for making um, you know either interesting screenshots or in, ge in general just viewing the terrain. So if I just zoom out here, you can see the terrain. Again, like I said, it's based on real satellite data. Um, so this camera does have a zoom function, so players can make some interesting videos. So we do have, a, like I said, we do simulate everything as close to reality as possible. Well, that includes the day-night cycle. So if I just uh, move the sun using my cheats here uh, down to the horizon, you can see the sunset is blue. That is because the uh, light is scattered through the atmosphere and uh, appears blue. So. If I put it completely into nighttime, you'll see that all I can see is stars, because, uh, yeah, it's dark. <laughs> There's no um, artificial lighting, so to help the player, we do have night vision to help him uh, work with it. So if I just jump back into the rover and look around, uh, what we also do have is uh, lights on individual cameras. So if I just switch off night vision, you can see it's a black and white camera, and you can see it casting the shadow there. So it is dynamic lighting. So if I just switch to this camera, you can at least see the uh, true color of the uh, surface here. So if I put it back in today and turn off the light, give it a sec, you can see it's all orange now. So, so this also allows you to see Mars in its true colors. So I'd also like to show you another scenario where we can see the uh, whole landing sequence. So, Gale Crater. Now in Take On Mars we have three locations, Kaiser Crater, Victoria Crater and Gale Crater. These are all real locations like I said and all of our locations are based on real satellite data. So here we have uh, the Gale Crater landing sequence. So this is based entirely on reality. Uh, basically Curiosity landed in, in this way. It, has, it was attached to a sky crane like we have here and it was attached through cables and it safely descended to the ground landed and the sky crane cut off and flew off and smashed into the ground. So as you can see we're landing here and uh, I'll just jump outside and again you can see the, uh, the location here. We've chosen locations which are visually interesting. Um, Curiosity did land in Gale Crater but it landed a bit north northwest of here, uh, about 50 kilometers. Uh, so our locations are 4x4 four four kilometers, so they're not entirely huge, um, but they're large enough for the rovers that we're simulating here. So you can see the uh, descent stage lowering the rover to the ground, and then it will uh, basically let go of the rover, cut the cables, fly off at an angle, and uh, crash into the ground over there. So this is all based on true, on what really did occur with Curiosity. So we can see the uh, sky crane falling to the ground now. So we'll just let it smash onto the ground. And this will also demonstrate the destruction system. So like I said, it's all physically simulated. You can see the lower gravity on Mars. You can see the lower air resistance. And uh, I'll just jump back to the rover here. So just jumping to the camera here. Again, uh, just to reiterate the, uh, the uh, suspension system, we'll see it as it, you will see how it can easily overcome this, uh, this dune here. So without a problem, it just drives right over the top. And again, rocks are not an issue either. So we have three types of science targets. Uh, we have uh, explore targets, which are blue, photo targets, which are red, and uh, analyze targets, which are yellow or orange, really. So right now we're heading over to an analyze target. Uh, so we'll do a bit of analysis with our uh, ChemCam, which is a laser spectrometer. So we're getting close now. So here we are, I'll drive back a little bit, okay, so we'll jump into inside view, or into the camera view, sorry, and uh, we'll switch, using the radial menu again, we'll switch to the instrument mode. So in this mode, we can see the individual locations of which we need to analyze. We can see that we need to analyze the stone within it, and that we need to uh, analyze it with the laser spectrometer. So we'll just uh, switch to the laser spectrometer's camera, zoom in here, and tell it to analyze and we'll just jump into external perspective and we can see the laser trying the rock and uh, doing the analysis. So it's just done its uh, little phase there and now it's just analyzing the uh, results. So if I just switch back to the camera here, I'll uh, switch to the robotic arm and I'll extend it. So I'll start like this. So again, in the, top right, in the top right here, we can see this camera. This camera is uh, located on the robotic arm. 
So as I extend it, you can see it. See, there's the robotic arm below it. And what we'll do, we'll extend it to the rock and perform the drill analysis over here. So I'll just uh, switch to the drill. And so using this camera, I can uh, guide the robotic arm to the ground. You can see in the cameras up the top right, how the, how the arm is moving there. So I'll just jump into there, you can see it. So I'll probably need to move a little closer. And back to here. Whoa, it's a bit much. Uh, so there we go. And now I'll uh, rotate the whole robotic head and uh, use the drill to drill the surface. So once, I, once it says ready, I can do the drilling. And here we go. So you can see it drilling the surface there. So while it does that, I'll uh, just quickly jump into the mask system here and uh, take a photo of that location over there. And so once the drilling is complete, I can uh, retract my drill and uh, store it. So I'd like to show you a bit of the uh, space program now. So I'll jump back to the main menu and uh, go to the space program. So I'll just restart it. Here we go. And immediately you're here or presented with a choice between game time and real time. Real time uses your real local time. So if it's night time on Victoria Crater at the current point at now, there's nothing you can do about it. You can either play tomorrow or just play in night time. Uh, with game time, however, you can skip time up here in the top left, so I can skip any amount of hours I wish. So if we look at the background here, we can see the whole um, night-day uh, curve. So if I skip about, let's say, I don't know, nine hours, we'll see that curve change. So here you go, it's changed, and it's night time locally. So in the space program, you can actually customize your vehicles. You can create your own presets. Uh, so you can start off with a with a skeleton and add items to it, so I'll do that now. So I'll select the skeleton uh, and give it a mask, as you can see. And then I'll give it a uh, drill system, uh, soil scoop system, and uh, we'll give it some, uh, I don't know, an antenna in the back there. And we'll give it some cameras as well. So we'll use the Hascam at the front here and the navigation camera up the top here. So as you can see, I've constructed my own little rover. I can uh, put the parts wherever I wish, like I mentioned. So I can give it a, another mask cam at the back there. And uh, using this test vehicle, I can test it in the uh, Mars yard that, uh, that, the, that, the, that, the, uh, that the game has available. So the Mars yard is on Earth. So here you can test the vehicle, break it, whatever you want. Um, without any consequences. You know, here you can uh, test the vehicle whether uh, what you've constructed is a good idea or not. So I've got a soil scoop system, so I could never ever actually uh, bring it to the ground because it's on the, on the front of the vehicle there. So I would find out that the setup I've just created is not very good for uh, analyzing the uh, surface of Mars. So I'll just jump into the uh, camera view here. And here you can also see that it's uh, Earth gravity. So uh, you'll be able to see it reacting differently than what we saw before on Mars. So you see it uh, keeps to the ground much more stably um, due to the gravity and the uh, lowered air resistance. And uh, what I'd like to now show you lastly is uh, the editor. Now the editor allows, like I said, for creating scenarios. Uh, so I'll jump into uh, Kaiser Crater, why not? That's the third location. And so, just uh, jumping in here, the editor allows for creating missions uh, as well as just testing whatever the game has to offer, like I mentioned. So we can see several missions here already made. So I'll just grab one of the missions and adjust it. As you can see, I can just, using the mouse, I can just grab parts, move them around, and uh, edit the mission parameters so I can define the priority of the mission, uh, whether it's enabled, uh, how much it gives you per completion of the mission, etc. But I'll just clear that, and uh, I'd like to show you object manipulation just really quickly. Uh, I'll just put a static object, move it around here, rotate it. You know, I can do anything I want with it. I can delete it if I want. Copy, paste, control C, control V, there we go. Delete it, remove it. And uh, I'd also like to show you uh, vehicle spawning, just quickly. So I'll just drop it from a height. As you can see in the editor, the physics are paused. So we'll just uh, let it drop. 
And as it smashes, pause it, and I can just switch off the HUD and see it, you know, take some interesting screenshots or videos. Looks quite interesting. I can do whatever I want with it. So I'll just delete this vehicle again. And uh, as I mentioned before, this game is heavily moddable. Uh, you can create your own vehicles, your own locations. Um, the locations you can define, what gravity they use, the air resistance, everything. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll show you something we will be releasing as part of a modding pack, uh, which is the Rover Racer. Uh, not very Rover-like, um, but it's at least it's just a demonstration of what's possible with the, with the modding tools. So I'll just create uh, another one over here with a, a machine gun. Uh, and like I said, uh, you can mod the, um, the vehicles, the uh, locations, and most importantly, the functionality. So at the moment, it uses the same HUD as, uh, as the rovers, but that will change afterwards. But this machine gun is a separate script module which players you know, can modify themselves. So if I just drive over here to it, to this vehicle, I can also demonstrate the destruction system. Again, not very uh, explorative. Uh, but uh, at least it demonstrates what's possible with the game. So you can drive around with like with a with a rally car essentially, um, which is fully destructible. Uh, so I'll just drive it across these rocks here. Ouch! Yeah, that was a little bit harsh. Uh, and here we go. <laughs> so that's basically Take on Mars. I hope you enjoy that. Um, oh, we're gonna drive off uh, at full speed. We'll toss it into the air. So yeah, so this allows for full modability. Um, the game will be out uh, at the end of July, basically the third quarter of this year, um, and it will be for 10 euros, so, uh, which is around 15 US dollars.